Hey guys, what's up? By Sector Trend here from One Half Gazette, here with the first video in my video reviewer series. Today we're watching a video by One Hive Raids and it's titled, Is Supercell and the Clash of Clans Team Great? So for a while I wasn't actually sure if I was going to even do this series because I pitched it to you guys a while back and you did uh, mention, a number of you guys did, uh, that it would cause a little bit of controversy possibly. Uh, but I also got a lot of support so I wasn't sure if I was going to do it or not. As you guys probably know on YouTube, these quote unquote react type videos can cause uh, some pretty huge beef between YouTubers and they tend to be pretty negative uh, type videos. That being said, I don't want to kind of let the bad stereotype prevent me from making a video. So I was kind of on the wall about doing this, but a number of you guys, actually a lot of you guys uh, submitted videos for me to look at. And uh, for a while it was just kind of all over the place, but recently it's been one video in particular that you guys have all been linking me. The video is by Jake from One Hive Raids, and a lot of you guys probably know his channel. As I said earlier, the video is titled, Is Supercell in the Clash of Clans Team Great? And uh, I went ahead and watched this video. I have a few thoughts that I'll share with you guys as we watch it here in this video. Um, but first, I have a few things I need to say before I start. Any opinions I give in this video are just my own, they're not of anyone else in One Hive Genesis, and uh, they're not of any other people, just myself and my own personal opinions. I have nothing against Jake, I think he's a great YouTuber and I'm not making this video to try to bash him or anything like that, just to kind of give my perspective which does align a little bit with what uh, he says in the video. Lastly, I did cut out parts of his video which is indicated by the fade to black transition. I'm not trying to misrepresent what he's saying but I just wanted to keep it a little bit shorter for the sake of time and uh, you can always check out his full video, uh, link is in the description for that but I tried to take out parts that I didn't think were quite as necessary to the overall meaning of the video. That all being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let's watch this. What is up guys, Jake from One Half here with the next Theory Craft video. Um, obviously this is gonna relate back to Supercell and Clash of Clans, but the sort of the title, as you guys know now, is is what does it mean to be great? And in this, I'm going to touch on a lot of things. But in this, I'm talking about a game. You know, what is it? What what does it mean for a company or for a community to have a great gamer or you know something special? So obviously, greatness, whether you're looking at the development team or the game itself, is going to be a little subjective. But let's see how he sets up his argument, and we'll follow that line of reasoning. And if you look at, at anything in life, you know, clans, in, in Clash of Clans, anything that separates good from great. And what's the difference? You know, what is it, what is what does one person or business or entity do that another does not that puts them on that next level? And I think it's pretty much the same, regardless of what you're talking about. It's it's effort, you know. Um if you talk about a sports figure, I don't think very many of the greatest, you know, when you look back and say the greatest, uh, what, what's the one thing that they had in common? Well, anybody that you talk to will tell you the same thing. You know, they were the, they were the first one in the gym. They were the last one to leave. The only problem I see with this uh, sports player comparison is that from the way he's saying, uh, the sports player seems to be doing it for more of an individual to be the best they can be, while as the gaming company is doing it. Uh, kind of for the enjoyment of other people to keep a large audience happy. So I don't know if it's quite parallel, but uh, let's keep listening and kind of see where this goes. You know, uh, if you talk about a business, uh, you talk about anything, it's great ideas, it's great employees. Um, it's people that, that take it to that next level. And when you have them come together uh, in one location, whether it be a, a, a team, a clan, a company, it really all of a sudden you have things that just go nuts. You have things. It's an, it's an ever changing landscape though. You can't, you know, when Michael Jordan, let's say hypothetically, I think he was the greatest basketball player to ever live. I don't want to get in that argument, but anyways. I would agree with that statement. When he got to where he was the best, it's not like he just went home and said, okay, I did it. I'm the best. Um, I don't have to put that work in anymore. No, no. He still worked hard every day to take it to the next level, the next level. And what made him the best was that he was always putting in more work than, than, than other people out there that he was competing against. 
Um, and again, I think it's the same for businesses. I think it's the same for clans. What makes one clan great and another clan just good? You know, I think it's the people in it. I think it's what they put into the clan. Okay, so so far I completely agree. Uh, definitely whatever you put in is kind of what you get out, especially uh, when we're talking about clans. Uh, people putting in the most hours are going to have the most successful clans. That's just kind of how it works. And uh, I think, you know, it applies to some businesses too, like he's saying. Uh, he's going to try to, I think, uh, connect this to Supercell. So uh, this might get a little more complicated, but let's uh, let's keep listening. And you look at these clans that are that are well known and at the top of the heap, and you're like, why why are they? You know, we got. I want I want a, I want my clan to be like that. Well, do you have a team that does that? Do you have people that put in hours every day, four to five, six hours, just like a job? Um, if you don't, that's probably why. Um, so I don't want to get too far off, but I want to set the framework for what I'm talking about and the way I look at these things. Um, just people in general can be great, just a great person. And one thing that I think has always been lacking from Supercell, I shouldn't say always, for a long time has been lacking from Supercell, is the desire, in at least my eyes, and this is just an opinion, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying this is the way it is. I'm saying from the outside looking in. The desire to be great. So I know he just made a claim and he'll back it up with evidence. I don't want to cut him off too early, but I do have to say, even though he did qualify this as an opinion, still it's so difficult to know the motives of a person, let alone a whole company as a collective whole. And the, the thing is, like, it's one thing to say, you know, Supercell uh, doesn't put out this kind of content that much in the updates. And that's a claim you can make backed by evidence from updates. But to say their motives are this, this is why they're doing something, I think it's a lot trickier because we only see one small part of Supercell and that's their game, that's what they say to us. Maybe Jake sees a little more behind the scenes if he goes to the headquarters or something, I don't know. But um, let's dive a little deeper into this. I think it's uh, it, it's a, t a tough claim to back up, but let's see what, he, what his evidence is. The desire to work harder than any other company out there is willing to work. The desire to constantly push it to that next level, to take it to something that no one ever expected, that, that just blows us away. If you look back over it, yes, there's been really good updates. Uh, there's been mediocre updates. There's been horrible updates. But where is the, where is the, the, the company as a whole that says we are going to be the greatest gaming company ever? And do they have that mindset? And I don't know. I can't tell you yes or no definitively. But what I can tell you is it doesn't show. So yeah, he clarifies that a little bit. It's his perception of Supercell's motives. Uh, I love Supercell's game. I, I think it's one of the, probably the greatest. I, I've enjoyed it as much as any other game I've ever played. Let's put it that way. There's nothing that can compare to it. But think about how many things more they could do. How much better it could be in any aspect you want to point out, whether it be farming, whether it be put trophy pushing, whether it be war, whether it be a, a game mode that's not even developed yet. Think about how much better it could be. And if if a person or a company or someone wants to be great, they will never stop until they get to that point. They will never stop going forward. They will never stop making improvements. It will be a something that is so driven in them that they just, they can't hardly sleep because they can't wait to get back to work to make that happen. Yeah, I, I do agree that, you know, sometimes it's frustrating because there's that one thing that would make the game so much better, uh, but they just don't implement it. They don't seem to be listening for whatever reason. Uh, but looking at it from Supercell's perspective, which is kind of what Jake's been talking about, their motives, I, I almost feel like you kind of have to do a cost benefit analysis. Like, at what point do you say, we, you know, we've done enough to keep people's grasp on the game, to keep it somewhat interesting, we've retained a lot of our audience, that's good enough, why don't we stop there? Because you also have to think, if they, you know, put all their cards on the table at once, then people are hungry for more, it gets old, they kind of have to keep it spread out, kind of ration the content almost, uh, to keep people still interested uh, with new stuff coming out. I don't see that from Supercell. Maybe you guys do. Maybe I'm missing something. Um, I'm not. This is not a super self bashing video. I'm just saying that we should all be able to look at ourselves and say, "Is there more I can do? Am I am I just sort of happy? Am I resting on my laurels to where 
I'm just sort of celebrating the fact that we did make a great game and uh, not constantly pushing it to that next level. I mean, I definitely understand Jake's argument, but I think that there's so many other factors that could potentially, I mean, he could be right, but they could potentially be going on, you know, underneath the surface of Supercell. Because remember, they have to maintain this game. It's not like they just sit around uh, when there's no new content. They're constantly doing PR, uh, keeping the coding in the game fresh, uh, trying to uh, do customer support. There's so many different things going on, uh, operations that don't involve adding content to the game. So, and, you know, for all we know, they could, you know, want to add stuff. They have to keep it spaced out, though. Uh, to keep, like I said, because they've done a good job. It's worked, obviously. They've kept uh, people like me and Jake in the game for, like, I don't know, three years now or something. So I, that's important to keep in mind. But um, let's kind of keep listening and see where, where else this argument goes. Yeah. Um, there's so many things, some simple, some not simple, that that could be done, that could constantly be improving. Little, you know, things like just the, the friendly challenge, for example. You know, there's things that that are clearly, since the day it was released, which was a great release, as a great update, there's things that have been clear, this needs to be improved. This needs to be changed to, to optimize, to make this the best feature it can be. And really, we've not, not only has it not happened, we've not heard anything about it. And even me being under the NDA, there's just nothing. There's just nothing there. This is a point I definitely agree a lot more with that Jake's making. I, I think that, uh, Stuff like the friendly challenge, like obviously it seems like you should be able to just have a map uh, that you open up and you can freely train uh, for no time at all, whatever troops you want, instead of having to train them in your actual barracks, which takes time and usually gems. So I think that's a good point. There's certain things that Supercell, they're easy. As soon as they implement something, it's almost like they're biting off more than they can chew and they can't make necessary fixes, at least in any kind of, you know, timely fashion to get it where it needs to be. So I think that's a big point. And also they need to listen to the uh, player base a little more and really see kind of what it is that we need changed right away. What's the priority? Because that's probably where their priorities should come from, uh, not from upstairs, probably from downstairs where people are playing the game. So I do agree with that. I think that's a good point. You know, think about how mind-blowing and how revolutionary and how amazing the Clan Wars update was itself. Uh, and it's just not... It's never been replicated. It's never been repeated years later. And I think it's, again, my opinion, I think it's just a, a mindset thing for them. It's just they know how successful they are. They don't have to. And so they don't. But that's what, this, that's what makes a company great. I think eventually if they don't, a company that has a different mindset will step up and they will overtake them. Yeah, I think that's, very true the fact that Supercell has not since Clan Wars uh, put out an update anywhere near that magnitude. But in that same breath, I think this is oversimplifying it a little bit because for Supercell, at the end of the day, you got to think, you know, have they already achieved their mission? Have they made the money or, you know, gotten their name out there? Whatever the, I guess, kind of the main goals are, have they already done that? Is trying to, uh, add this new dimension to Clash that Jake is proposing, is that worth it at this point to, to put in the resources to do that? Uh, will it uh, revitalize the game enough? So I think that's something they're probably thinking about. And maybe they are. Maybe we'll see that new dimension. Maybe not. But I think for them, you know, there's more than just trying to be quote-unquote great in the eyes of the war community or of players in general. I think there's just more to it. And I, I would love to see them, don't get me wrong, I would love to see more stuff in Clash. I'd love to see them uh, do more as a company, but I do understand kind of where they're coming from strictly in kind of the business sense. I don't see any hunger. I don't see any true motivation to really just, I mean, constantly raise the bar, uh, maybe even exceed their own expectations of what's possible in a mobile game. level. And it's not like they can claim they don't know what the viewers want. Yeah, there's no need to elaborate on that. That's definitely true. Uh, they've they've been told many times what uh, the Clash community wants from all corners of it. H hundreds of thousands of people that feed them opinions. They don't take it. They don't utilize it. They don't take advantage of it. And again, in my mind, in my opinion, that just shows 
that lack of greatness to say we are going to be the best, the best of all time ever. There'll never be someone do it better than we are. And maybe that's an American mindset. Maybe that's why uh, we, you know, we get ourselves into trouble, uh, always, always pushing for more and more and more and more and more. And maybe in the European countries, it's not that way. I don't know. I don't know. I can't speak to their culture. So from Jake's definition, what I've heard so far, I don't think they're great under his definition then because they're not singly striving to just be the best in the eyes of the players that they make the game for. They're, they're trying to balance probably a few different motives, one of which is to keep the players happy, to have a quote-unquote good or great game, but I think that's not their sole motive, so it may come across as a lack of motivation in that area. Uh, but I don't think it's a cultural difference or anything like that. It's, it's clear it's across all of their games. Which I think is just more evidence that it's a business decision rather than a lack of motivation uh, if it's across all these different games of different conditions. Games. Simple things like cheating, like, um, like the wind trading that goes on over there. If you want to make a decision to, to say, okay, our game's going to be great and that's not going to be part of our game, then you hire a team. I don't care if you get, they, they, they pride themselves on having small company. If it was my company, I would hire 50, I would double the size of the company and the next ones that I bought, that I, that I, I, I hired, their job would be to simply find the cheaters and ban them. Gone. Forever. Your job is to find them. I'm, I'm not talking about some octopus that detects it automatically. I'm talking about you go and you watch what we're watching as players and then you get rid of them. That's your job. You know, if they want to cry, if they want to complain, whatever. We don't care. We don't want them in our community. Things like that. That's how you take a game to the next level. Theoretically, that would be great, but I'm not going to hold anything against Supercell for not doing that. I think that's probably the smarter business decision, which is why I'm not going to condemn them for doing something that's probably going to make them more money in the end. And honestly, if I was the head of Supercell, uh, if it was going to mean losing profits, it's something you do have to think about. So I know I kind of sound like the devil's advocate and I'm um, against the, the game, but really I'm just trying to look at it from their perspective because I do agree that with a lot of what Jake's saying that some of this stuff would be awesome to have in the game. That's how you make a game great. And then you talk about features, same thing. You hire another team and you say your job is to come out with the next mind-blowing gameplay feature. Blow my mind. Amaze me. Show me something that no one could ever have envisioned and bring it to me and we're going to put it in this game. But you don't see that. You see them sort of same old, same old, status quo, a little bit more of the same, that new troop here, new troop there. But where is the, oh my gosh, clan war update? This changes everything. I don't have a whole lot more to say, but I just want to make the point that uh, I'd love to see some new stuff in the game. But at the same time, anything that's going to change the balancing of the troops could be kind of detrimental because look at your barracks, look at your dark barracks. Almost every troop in there is used in war um, in some way, war alone, just one mode of the game. So something that maybe a new game mode, I think that Jake's talked about before would be awesome, but something that changes the actual infrastructure of the game uh, might ruin that very delicate balancing. So that's something to keep in mind. When they don't take the initiative themselves, when they are not the ones putting in the effort, it sort of makes me, as a player, as a, as a YouTuber, as a content creator, not want to put in the effort. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe it does. Uh, but hopefully, maybe some people from Supercell watch this. And, and, and again, I'm not trying to bash them. I'm not trying to downgrade them. I'm saying take a fair look at yourselves, at your company, and ask yourselves these questions. Are we doing everything we can every day? To make this the best game possible and i think if you're fair yeah i think those are all fair points and uh from here he kind of just wraps up the video so i'll wrap up mine uh in conclusion guys i think that jake uh while he does make some good points and i do agree with him on a number of them i think he may be mistaking uh multiple motivations for a lack of motivation in one area because you kind of have to look at this from an all-around business perspective of a company and one final thought I just want to leave you guys with is this um, does making a great company in a great game involve the same actions if they want to make Clash of Clans the best game it can be and sacrifice like Jake said you know profits really put in extra people to you know police the game for cheating and do all that stuff is that the same thing as making the company great as building it monetarily or building the name of it? 
And I think that when you look at it, those might be two different things. Whereas sometimes they might have to make sacrifices in the game of Clash of Clans for the better of the company. Um, so I'm not sure if uh, making a great game and a great company are the same thing. But is Supercell great to answer Jake's question? I think by keeping us and keeping a huge, massive player base around for all this time, I would say, yes, they are a great company. Is Clash of Clans great? While it is one of the most fun games that I've ever played, I think it's an amazing game. I think they, like Jake said, could do more to make it a truly great game. But like I said, a great company and a great game may not involve doing the same thing. Anyway though, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, you can let me know by dropping a like and let me know in the comments below what you think. And if you guys like it, I'll be sure to continue this series. So thanks for watching this video. Got some great content uh, planned for this weekend. Have some awesome attacks and we also have an arranged war coming up. So we should see all that on the channel soon. So I'll see you guys in the next video though. Bisect the Tron out.